Today on The Topping Show, Elon on Alexander de Maurice being a dictator goes viral. Biden proposes to pay off student loans despite the Supreme Court ruling the government can't do that last year. J.P. Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon critiques Biden's natural gas attack. The View claimed that the solar eclipse is a sign of climate change, while Whoopi Goldberg goes viral for saying that abortion is okay because it's not mentioned in the Ten Commandments, according to her. Dude Perfect also raises $100 million from private equity. The eclipse may have actually generated $6 billion in value. And we have hand sanitizer being called because it's been known to call it blindness or coma. All of that and much more on The Topping Show. Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in today. Today's episode of The Topping Show is proudly sponsored by Topping Technologies. Topping Technologies is an IT value-added reseller and services company with a special proficiency in IT security. Heck, I see their founder at least twice a day. Guys, he's quite handsome and brilliant. He's me, you see, that's a joke. If you're an IT leader or a business owner, you can reach the team at sales at toppingtechnologies.com. Also, try and get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of the month, so if you could click that button, I would greatly appreciate it. Now, going over to the business part of the podcast, you have Dude Perfect raised $100 million from private equity. Now, he is perhaps one of the most famous YouTubers in the country, or some say the state of Texas, and... They are known for, as the name might imply, having one of the best impressive track records for making impossible shots happen, from ping pong balls to sports balls to even RC toy cars. They are highly entertaining, having hundreds of millions of views. And actually, if we go, let's see here, pull up a LinkedIn article from Emma Thorne. They note that they raised a little over $100 million from private equity firm High Mount Capital in a bid to expand beyond the video platform. They just made it famous. It was founded by five Texas A&M students in April 2009. Dude Perfect started by posting a video of basketball trick shots. Today he celebrates his 15th anniversary. Jeez Louise, time flies. The group has more than 60 million subscribers on YouTube. In addition to having games, toys, and TV shows to its name, Dude Perfect expects revenue to top $50 million this year, double what it made just two years ago, which is astronomically impressive, especially when you consider the YouTube ad apocalypse, as some might say, when the ad rates are decreasing over time on average. But that's, of course, why they're trying to diversify their business and having more and more of these outlets, again, having toys, games, TV shows, they can actually have more than one revenue stream. That's why every single podcast on the planet seemingly is sponsored by some type of coffee company, usually their own white labels, but they have some type of copy to sell. Now, they know that the group plans to put the funds towards hiring a management team and additional staff. It's already interviewing CEO candidates, as one member had told Axios. Now, they also know that Dude Perfect isn't the only YouTube sensation to branch out recently. In March, Mr. Beast cut a deal to have Amazon Prime Video for a reality show competition. So, it'll be interesting to see. It's going to be a tough year for a lot of YouTubers, because, again, the ad rates are going down. But a lot of these other ones are doubling down and trying to diversify, so... They're going to put out even more content. Now, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, a lot of companies have to go through those painful growing phases where they try to bring in like a professional CEO, quote unquote, or, you know, a traditional management team. And in some cases, it can help the business flourish and, you know, exponentially grow. But again, you also have to make sure they're a good fit for the company, good fit, good fit for the culture. Because again, one bad leader and it could tank the company. As you've seen with half the business blunder, putting companies out of business. Now, that being said, Hopefully they're interviewing some CEO has experience in entertainment and media and hopefully they kind of jive with the local team, so to say. Let me know, do you think it's going to be a good deal for them to expand the company, taking out this new investment? Because again, they're also giving up a little bit of ownership of the company, of course. They're not, you know, they're not just doing this out of the kindness of their heart with a private equity company. So do you think it'll be a good overall beneficial relationship or do you think it could potentially tank the channel or in the company? As always, be fascinated to hear what you have to say. Other interesting business news, you have the Eclipse may have generated $6 billion in value this week, as astonishing as that might sound. Now, this is by Kara Reinhardt over at LinkedIn News. They note that, quote, from sold-out hotels and Airbnbs to flights offering a glimpse from the air, Americans were on the move for the best view Monday earlier this week for the solar eclipse. Demand surged for businesses in the path of totality, even as worries about cloudy weather persist in parts of the country. By one estimate, the Eclipse could generate $6 billion in economic activity. 
Brands in March marketing campaigns offer products and wireless providers are prepared for spiking cell phone usage as customers share to race the uh, share race to share the event, which won't be repeated in lower 48 states until 2044. They also know that it was the first total solar eclipse that was visible in the U.S. since 2017, and they claim that 154 million Americans watched. Which I wonder how they really yeah, how do you pull that? Do you just you know send out a mass email and say, hey, did you look up that day? Six billion dollars. And don't get me wrong, I saw a lot of people with those nerd glasses and all the cool stuff. I mean, truth be told, I thought it was an interesting novelty when I just drove to a customer meeting that day. And yeah, it was kind of, neat, kind of neat. And I see how some can be entertained by it. But six billion dollars. If you were to, I, and again, kudos to these businesses, beauty of capitalism. A lot of people making a lot of money off those little glasses. I mean, people are. I still can't believe people are traveling for this. And again, people have unusual hobbies and interests. Uh, that's more than just my perspective, of course. But people are going to Airbnbs just to see this. Truth be told, the best photos you're going to see are the best. I mean, everyone has a everyone has a friend in professional photography. I couldn't help but notice on the Facebook. I mean, a couple of my friends who are professional photographers, they took the best pictures, bar none. And I was going to say that's pretty much all of Facebook this week. So it is kind of funny that people are actually making these big flights and going to places specifically for that. But, I mean, did you spend any money on this solar eclipse? I mean, again, personally, I just drove to a customer meeting. It was, it was a cool novelty to drive when it's like in the dark. It was not really, you know, not nighttime yet. But, so I didn't spend anything. But, as always, be fascinating here. what you have to say. Now, going over to the cultural part of the podcast, you have Whoopi Goldberg saying abortion is okay because it, according to her, is not mentioned in the Ten Commandments. Interesting. Now, this was first reported uh, by Colin Rugg over at X Twitter, and he said, quote, New, The View co-host Whoopi Goldberg suggests that abortion is okay because it's not mentioned in the Ten Commandments. And then he has a couple quotes from her. And usually before I play a clip, I usually say how their voice is infinitely better than mine. It's maybe an exception to the rule, but I mean, I was going to say, thankfully, it's only a little less than two minutes, though it might feel like an eternity just because it's Whoopi Goldberg, but let's see what she has to say, or doesn't have to say, rather. No one is obligated to have an abortion, so no. you never have to have one, and I, I hope no one ever has to have one, but if you find yourself in a position where you have to, I want to make sure, and I'm way past having kids. Mm, I want to make sure, mm -hmm. yes, way past. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make sure that if you decide this is what you need to do, I'm going to get behind you because I don't know your life. And if you say this is what you need, that's what I'm going to do. 50 weeks, 75,000 weeks, whatever, how many weeks, it's... 75,000 weeks? I mean, I don't think you can kill, like, how, how old would that be? So she said, you know, abortion at 75,000 weeks. Isn't that what she said? 75,000 weeks. All right, let's pull that up. That might, how old would that be? So 75,000 weeks. So there's 52 weeks in the year, if, in case you didn't know, which if you went to a public school, you may not know. So that's 1,442 years old. That'd be a, a very late term abortion. I, I don't know anyone who's lived that long. I mean, I mean, Bill Gates looks really old. I know he's not that old yet. But yeah, 1,442 years old. That's pretty old, Whoopi. But even, even then, she thinks she should be able to uh, end someone's life. Whatever happened, we, it's nobody's business. It's you... Your doctor and God. That's who you have to be. Fascinating how the man is always left out of this equation. And yet, in some states, they still want financial support or other types of support. And yet, it's even more heartbreaking when you consider there are some men who want the child, and yet the woman will abort the child. When, in many instances, one could argue, why not deliver the child? And if the man wants it, he could take care of it. Granted, there are limitations to what he can do physically to assist the child's development and growth. But there are alternatives. But they never get a say. Even as I'm told, culture is evolving. And yet, men are pretty ostracized from the entire situation when it comes to that. 
this. Ironically, by the same people who cannot define what a woman is or what a man is. And it's not mentioned in the in the Big Ten. I'm just going to say, no. in the Big Ten, it is not meant. The commandments? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, now I know reading ten statements for some people can be a stretch in terms of their intellectual capabilities. Would be Goldberg. I, I maybe that's above her pay grade. If she can't read the commandments again, I know it, it, it's some. It's a long read for some. I mean, ten statements, ten commandments. Kind of something there that says, "Thou shall not kill." Maybe she, maybe she has an intellectual rebuttal for that. Perhaps. You know, because I think God is pretty clear. Here's the stuff that'll make your life better on earth. Here's the thing. don't lie, because you don't want people lying to you. Don't mess with somebody's wife, because you're going to be mad if they're messing with you. Be Just, you know, be common sense stuff. You say, thou shalt not kill. They believe that. Yes, well, here's the thing. It. I think thou shalt not kill cannot be used as the, as the, as the block, because we allow wars all the time. Yes, we do. The crusades we allow the death were about yeah. all these things. We so, allow guns. Yes. So there is some conversation to be had here so you can either you thou shalt not kill yeah for everybody yes and everything and everything, everything. or we have to talk about all the things that you and i yes. need to do and i have to yes i i need to give you now i know that was probably painful for most people's ear balls it was <laughs> it was not easy to get through that so i appreciate it actually are still tuning into the show and it went moderately viral not the craziest but I thought it was mildly entertaining. Now, it got a little bit over more than half a million views and 2.8 thousand likes in the first 24 hours of being posted earlier this week. And again, if you actually look at the Bible interpretation and translation, it's supposed to be, thou shalt not murder. Because again, thou shalt not kill. There are some instances where in self-defense, if someone's attacking you and your family, it makes sense you'd be morally justified to defend yourself and your family. Now, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe everyone thinks she is the peak intellect and a scholar, some might say, is is on the level of Socrates. I mean, those people are probably drinking Bud Light, but let's go in the comments and find out. One of the first comments comes from Kyle Becker saying, quote, I think Whoopi's hair is pulled back so tight, it's cut off oxygen to her brain. I'm cooking 1.7 thousand likes. Pulling back one more, we have Paul Zuzupa saying, quote, Whoopi just admitted that abortion is the killing of an innocent baby, yet she still defends it. There's no defense for that. We all live in a society that values human life, all human life. I'm cooking 611 likes. Junita Broderick says, quote, Thou shalt not kill is one of the Ten Commandments. Maybe she hasn't read them yet. I'm quoting 4.3 thousand likes. The Rook at Media TM says, quote, Just lost the brain cell watching this clip. And they also have a news article clip that says, Kamala enjoys being the smartest person in the room when it looks like Kamala Harris was on the view. Which, man, that bar is so low. She might be. Which is quite concerning. Again, there are many brilliant women out there in the world. That Tim Dillon would say, none of them are on the view. None. And that did get 154 likes. Let's see here. Desiree says, quote, who thinks the, should, the, the, uh, the view? I almost went French there for a second. I apologize. I think I said the Jew. Like Jacques? Nevertheless, my speaking in aptitudes aside, she says, who thinks the view should be canceled? It got 733 likes, which I don't know if I ever wanted it to be canceled. It's so entertaining. And so mentally vacuous. It's almost like a really bad reality show. We're like, there's no way that they're this dumb. And yet, they certainly are. This is from the same show that said, men are evil, they don't need men. Saying that in front of their male producer. Awkward. Mentally vacuous. Yes. Red Wave Press, this quote, is actually the sixth commandment. Thou shalt not kill, getting 337 likes. Kevin M. Nelson said, quote, the literal translation is thou shalt not murder, which means killing the innocent. Abortion is killing an innocent human in the first 280 days of life. Thou shalt not kill would have contradicted God's command to Noah's son in Genesis 9-6. Abortion is murder. I'm getting 377 likes. USMC Lady Vet says, quote, I don't count myself as a religious scholar, but the commandment not to kill seems to be part of the 10. I'm getting 689 likes. Florida man says, quote, and it is appropriate. The character is, in fact, a, a humanoid orange with a red hat. And the orange is also an emoji in their name. So the very Florida man says, quote, question for Whoopi, is slavery okay because it's not in the Ten Commandments? Would love to hear her take 
according to this logic. I'm going to gain 576 likes. Peacemo says, quote, Whoopi Goldberg is dumber than a box of AOCs. I'm going to gain 429 likes, which... Ooh. Ooh, that's a tough one. I'd say that that's probably about accurate. I mean, AOC, mom morally and mentally vacuous. In many ways, she... What is it? Even clock is right twice a day or broken clock is twice a day? She did introduce a bill with Matt Gates. I think it was two years ago. That would ban public officials in, in Congress from buying stocks and then, you know, making laws to actually make those stocks go up in value to have personal gain. And I think she also agrees to term limits. I forget. You have Gunther Eagleman saying, quote, abortion is murder, murder getting 726 likes. Graham Allen says, quote, it's literally number six, thou shalt not kill, unquote, getting 202 likes. Let's see here. There's got to be some contrarian kind of statements. Because, again, people tune in the show. Now, granted, perhaps it's like Howard Stern where a lot of people just tune in because they hate it so much and they hate watch it. Let's see. But no, it looks like overwhelming just all against, let's see here, all against the view. So, and again, there are views fans out there. They're just not in the comments section. I mean, why, I'm, pre, I'm actually astonished. Why are they not defending the gals on the view? Which begs the question, have you ever met anyone in real life, not on a college campus, who is a fan of The View, who tunes in regularly and loves the show? I, I mean, I've thought about this before the show today, and it, I don't know anyone who's watched The View unironically or has not just watched it just to laugh at it. I don't, it again, there are the fans out there, don't get me wrong, I'm sure they exist. But have you ever met anyone who is a fan of The View and tunes in consistently to the show? I mean, I would be especially fascinated here if you heard that, if you if you experienced those specific individuals that are out there. I mean, let me know. As always, I would be fascinated to hear what you have to say. Other interesting cultural news, you have The View claims that the solar eclipse is a sign of climate change, and as youth might say, you got ratioed on social media. Now... Let's see here. This, well, sorry, the hens are quack. What is it? Barking? No, hens don't bark yet. Clocking? There we go. There's a TikTok actually first reported on this, and they say, quote, Sunny Hostin suggests that the solar eclipse, the earthquake, and the fact that cicadas are coming are a sign of climate change, unquote. Which, uh, it sounds about right for the view. I mean, facts and oil, you know, kind of like oil and water. Fun home experiment for for the kids in science class if you try to mix oil and water you can mix it really really hard and they just don't mix it's a fascinating yet simple science experiment and some people kind of like facts the logic you can mix it up in their brain but it's, they just don't mix together although who knows no 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 we don't i, I don't think the view is going to increase their intellectual capabilities anytime soon but it is entertaining this way now, granted, this might hurt your earballs worse than darn near anything, even worse than my voice, but we will play this quick 53-second clip of The View. Granted, it might feel like an eternity, but without too much further ado. Leaving, we've got a solar eclipse. Uh, we've she got ran the earthquake. Down the she ran down the hallway. The and rapture then, is here. The rapture's here. And then also, I learned that the cicadas are coming. Cicadas. Cicadas. Oh, I love for the them. first time in... Do you hear that? Let me rewind that. I didn't believe it. Cicadas. Cicadas. Whoopi Goldberg was right about something? I almost feel like you need to buy someone a drink. This It happens so infrequently. We were just reporting on the show earlier about how she, you know her whole debacle saying abortion is, according to her, okay, because it's not in the Ten Commandments. Perhaps in senior reading that she can't read. But nevertheless, she actually just corrected someone. Yeah, and they, it is pronounced cicadas, and spoiler alert, they come out cyclically every number of years, especially if you live, if you live up north, you notice them even more. Uh, it's painful to hear, I know, but we'll, we'll, it's almost done. This oh, is for the first time in, like, like no, 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 two different, no, two, no, well, they, this is what I read, two different there's types. There's two of, different kinds of cicadas. Yeah, two different times, times are coming. The good cicadas but, and the bad cicadas. But for the first time <laughs> in, in many, many years. No, seven, so, every 17 years this happens. Well, that's not what I read, but maybe, <laughs> but, you know. <clears throat> may Fact check, I, I just checked it, I just, I checked the community notes. She said she read it. It looks like maybe she can read. I was thinking maybe Sunny couldn't. 
But I looked at the community notes on this post. No one's fact checked her saying you can't read. So, all right, we'll let that stand for now. Well, you know better. I, but in I a way, say all those all those things together would maybe lead one to believe that you know either climate change exists That's or, or something point. is really or going on. Is returning. Earthquakes are not at the mercy of climate change. It's underground. No. They can't. I don't it, think it, that it happens. And, the, and the, the eclipse. They've known about the eclipse coming because eclipses happen. Leaving, we've got a solar. That was painful. And talk about a lame name. Her name is Sunny? That's ridiculous. That's not even a real name. It's almost as comical as having a name like Topping. Oh, wait. But I partially digress. Now, I guess you should be too surprised. This is The View, which is... I can't... They, they say it's filmed in front of a live studio audience. So there's some people watching who authentically like the show. I've never met anyone who actually tunes in the show and likes it. If you have, let me know. Then this went viral, to say at least. It got 3.8 million views and 16,000 likes, which is quite a few to say the least. Scrolling down, one of the first posts comes from Paul Zuzupa saying, quote, is it possible that Sonny Hostin is dumber than we actually thought? That's quite remarkable if you think about it. I'm quoting 1.9 thousand likes. Pismo also says, Sonny Hostin is dumber than a box of AOCs. I'm quoting 3,000 likes, which eh, be a close call. So, because, I mean, even AOC, Granted, I don't believe with pretty much anything she says or her policy or conscriptions, but she is at least accurate or she has a skill set for being good at social media. Granted, her policies are terrible, but I mean, she has her skill set. And she, as youth might say, goes viral, raises millions of dollars, has people who vote for her. Now, Salty Goat also says, don't these women have husbands or friends to pull them aside and tell them how stupid they sound? Okay, 2.9 thousand likes. Scrolling down more and more, you have Vince Langman saying, quote, if you added up the IQs of all of them, you still wouldn't hit double digits on cooking 949 likes. One bad dude, dude simply says, the dumbest of the dumb have gotten on television to infect minds with their stupidity on cooking 526 likes. Planet of Memes said, quote, how is this horrible show even still on the air? I'm cooking 566 likes, which I'd be fascinated to see the p &L statements for the view. Like how much profits, how much losses are they generating? Like what's their overhead? How much are they paying these gals? And what are the ad dollars really worth? Would you would you advertise a product or service on the view? So they watch the view, then commercial go to commercial break, and they see your business or your show or your, your employer. I, I mean, there's certain products I'm sure that would sell like hotcakes, probably high fructose corn syrup hotcakes. But I mean, it, there's such a. I would love to know what what is the actual number of people tuning in to watch the show. Scrolling down, you have Redway Press saying, quote, Democrats don't understand the fact that there are only two genders. How could they possibly understand that how climate change works? Follow if you agree, getting 505 likes. Well, this clip is too perfect not to use. This is from Family Guy. And it has Stewie trapped into the glass, what is it, glass cube, and Brian sitting on the couch. Uh, this is posted by Great Meta, saying, quote, The View in short. <laughs> And it's the view gals just clucking. I had to do a double take because I thought that was the actual view, but no, it was a family glad clip. It, the look is quite similar. Now I got 317 likes. George Alexandopoulos says, quote, spiritually without wisdom is a dangerous thing. That's how people end up sacrificing babies to a burning cow statue and cooking 641 likes and a reference to the Bible, which unfortunately most Americans probably wouldn't get these days. Mindy Robinson says, quote, I've taken t taco craps hi with higher IQs than these shrieking harpies on the view on cooking 776 likes. Florida man also so said, she just admitted that global warming is something natural and humans have no control over it. You can't make this up on cooking, getting 386 likes. Let's see here. It's gotta be some contrarian statements. It's gotta be someone who likes the view who's gonna proclaim their faith to them or their allegiance to them on the X Twitter. Let's see here. Brian Lawrence says, quote, because none of those have existed before in the however millions of years Earth has existed, climate change, hmm, 10K years ago, most of North America was under glaciers. Does that count as climate change? And quote, getting 69 likes. Let's see. Scrolling down, there's got to be old school Eddie simply says, she needs to lay off the shrooms, gain 42 likes. 
Jax says, quote, this woman is a lawyer. Think about that. I'm cooking 75 likes, which I'm trying to think of what category of law you would ever want her to represent you in. I mean, of all the time, uh, one of the VFP challenges I would almost think might make sense to do a plea agreement or just settle in the, let's see here. I mean, scrolling down more and more, just, I'm not seeing anything agreeing with them. And again, there are, if, if you do agree with the view, then let me know in the comments. I'd be, I'd be especially fascinated to hear what you have to say. Because again, and just more and more, I mean, they're just all ratioing these gals. But let me know, again, have, especially, have you ever met anyone who tunes into The View? I mean, as always, I mean, I'd be fascinated to hear what you have to say. Now, going over to the political part of the show, you have Elon how Alexandre de Mores is a dictator tweet going viral, as youth might say. Now, going to X Twitter, and obviously this is from Elon, he says, quote, How did Alexandre de Mores become the dictator of Brazil? He has Lula on a leash. Laughy emoji. That got 34.3 million views and 221,000 likes. Although, if I like it, no, I wasn't the, it didn't, my vote didn't count in terms of, it didn't uptick it, rounded up to 222,000. But nevertheless, I did appreciate that tweet. And it'll be interesting to see if Brazil, as they try to crack down on free speech, under the auspices of hate, or hate speech, that's always the back door that they use to censor so many people. Because again, the unpopular speech is the most the one that needs protection the most. And again, even if I don't agree with it, I'll still fight to the death for someone's right to have the right for free speech. Now, you have one of the first comments coming from Luke Zaliski, our favorite kind of, our favorite leftist. Well, don't really like him, but he is someone who's very far left, and more more different viewpoints the better. Life gets can be a little bit boring if you get into an echo chamber. Now, Luke Zaliski says, "quote Brazil's government may be out of line, but equally likely is that Trump and." Bolsario are allies and want this propaganda campaign, and Elon sees it as an opportunity to market himself as a savior of free speech because it's great TM, the way way to use X to wield power, and well, use power. And here we are, just a few short weeks after Trump and Elon met at Trump's lying website, Truth went public, and much of X fanfare helping to drive up the price, which naturally fell immediately after Trump had raised enough paper. To stay solvent and out of jail for now. That is mostly mentally vacuous. However, 36 people did like that particular response. Now, I wonder if you got ratioed in and of itself. It says there's eight responses, but I only see one. And that comes from Evidia La Libertad Cajero saying, quote, Luke tries to equate himself to Elon like the like a leftist clown, that's all there is to it, unquote. Now Look in here. I don't think anyone actually. Uh, uh, no one actually liked that. But nevertheless, that person did respond to Luke. Now, let's see here. Real government. Yeah, Paul Zazupa saying, quote, Lulu is a dictator too, getting 64 likes. Liberty Pill Memes says, quote, protect free speech at all costs. And there's a picture of Elon in the cliche kind of meme where you see the soldier taking the grenades and knives. And it's a picture of Elon in that place with the X logo and is protecting someone who's sleeping under the flag of the Brazilian country's flag. They got 9.9 thousand likes. You also have Nicholas Ferreira saying, quote, tell us more, getting 25,000 likes. Liberty Pill Memes again chimed in saying, quote, he seems familiar. And it's a guy from, I think it's the Day the Earth Stood Still. is a sci-fi film in which a gentleman would put on glasses and see the aliens, but then take them off and see nothing. And before he had the glasses on, the meme is he's looking at this um, Mr. Demores, and he does look creepy like the cross-dressing Amish person or pilgrim with an Amish. And then when he puts the glasses on, it's Lord Voldemort from Harry Potter. They got 6.1 thousand likes. Francisco Cardosco says, quote, Why are the Lula government, Justice Alexandria, and other members of the Supreme Court accusing the Network X of being criminal, but keeping their verified profiles active here, getting 5.1 thousand likes. Let's see here. Ellie Vieira says, quote, he, he have, grammar be damned, I'll read it exactly how he wrote it. He have rumors, gossip, he used to be secretary for San Paulo in government by the Brazilian Social Democracy Party, Lula's party, 
PT used to treat this party as a extreme right foe. Now Lulu's vice president is from the PSDB, very weird. They claim they united against Bolsonaro, but another Supreme Court judge, Gilmer Mendez, said that the car wash pro the car wash probe, which put Lula in jail for over a year, went too far when it reached PSDB. Now that got 2.1 thousand likes, and he did correct himself. With a, he responded to himself saying, "I meant to say we have rumors." Gained 126 likes. Scrolling down, you have Zampa saying, "Quote: He's going to ban X in Brazil." Elon is a picture of Mr. Morales putting on creepy makeup. Gained 5,000 likes. Carla says, "Yes, he has." Gained 2,000 likes. Let's see here. More and more memes. Oh, was it the Spirit Halloween store where you say you dress up as Brazis, the Brazilian justice slash supervillain? And there's a picture of him in that creepy, like a pilgrim and a witch kind of type of wardrobe cross dressing. They got 5,000 likes. You also have Fabian Barroso saying, quote, good question, getting 3,000 likes. Let's see here. Medicos Palo Liberdad says, quote, you are starting to get the hang of it how a banana republic works. That is precisely what happened here. One want money, Lula, the other want power, Alex, and the reached an agreement like the Germans and Russians in the 1930s, unquote, gaining 3.6 thousand likes. Scrolling down more and more. Italio Senna says, quote, wait for the process, unquote, gaining 10 thousand likes. Scrolling down. Let's see the Zen contrarian statements. Marcelo Morales says the dictator of Brazil is Victor Saro. Please remove him, getting 4,000 likes. Let's see here. Omar says, quote, hey man, Morales is married. Find another PICA, getting 5.9 thousand likes. So as the battle for free speech heats up in Brazil, it'll be interesting to see, I mean, the government wants to fine Elon. Do they eventually, if he refuses to play the fine, again, those are, I think it's 10,000 per person per day when they find someone who apparently will go against their new definition of hate speech. Now, will Elon just pay that out of his pocket? Will they just shut down the app completely in that area and just everyone will have to use a VPN? I mean, X is truly one of the last places when it comes to freedom of speech. I think, again, most people, in terms of user technology, most people don't want to deal with VPNs and doing the extra steps, but that would be a testament to the technology and to the platform if people have such loyalty to the product that they're willing to do more steps to actually use it, which include paying and setting up for a VPN and going to visit the Twitter website. Because again, maybe the government just, you know, they reach out to Apple and Google and say, hey, in this geography, we're gonna ban this from the Apple store. Do it or else we'll just ban your products altogether. There is, as one man might say, more ways to skin a cat. I don't, I don't know if they do that for real in Brazil though. I forget what they eat, but nevertheless, let me know. Would you actually, if they did, were to ban X Twitter in your country, would you be willing to do the extra, you know, two, three to five steps to actually get there so you can actually keep using the product even when the government tries to censor it? As always, be fascinated here what you have to say. Other interesting political news, you have Biden proposes to pay off student loans despite the Supreme Court ruling that you uh, can't do that last year. Now, this comes directly from Biden's Twitter X profile, though, again, I don't know if it's really him tweeting this. It was really be revealed last year. This press secretary was actually doing it for him when she unwisely, well, we all know she's not very wise, Mr. Kareem Jean-Pierre, but nevertheless, she actually had an incident where she tweeted from her personal profile and it was the vernacular of Biden, as if it was from his perspective. So she's not even smart enough to know how to change the profiles on her ex-Twitter account. So we'll say this allegedly was tweeted by Biden. He said, quote, my administration is proposing we cancel the debts of 2 million borrowers who are eligible for debt forgiveness through the SAVE plan, public service student loan forgiveness, or other debt cancellation programs, but haven't enrolled yet. You deserve relief, unquote. And that did get 1.7 million views, but only 13,000 likes, which again, that's still a fair amount of likes. Truth be told, not to brag, but I did get six likes on one of my videos last week, as you might say that went relatively viral. Now, again, the Supreme Court said you can't do this, and yet this isn't the first time we've seen this administration just ignore the Supreme Court and do whatever they want. Very similar to how they force private companies and landlords to, you know, just not charge for rent during the pandemic lockdowns. 
And during that time, actually, the government said, oh, yeah, we know this is not a bad administration said, we know this is a constitutional, but we're going to do it anyway. And they did, which shockingly, more Americans didn't get upset with. Now, that being said, from a political perspective, it's actually a good move. Bribery works. A lot of people would appreciate it. you just pay off the loans. Again, this isn't $2 million. This is 2 million individuals. And there are many mechanisms where the government already pays off the student loans. Again, there's no such thing as student forgiveness. The money's coming from somewhere. So if you work, for example, for the government in some type of entity in terms of you work at maybe a local police department or you're a federal employee, if you pay the bare minimums on your student loans, in some cases, after a certain amount of years, they, the government will just pay off the rest, also known as you will and I will subsequently, because again, the government doesn't create value or you know money. They just take it. They tax it. Well, they create fiat money, which actually causes hyperinflation and it's basically just junk. But I'm partially digress. But again, this is a great way to buy votes. It is the election year. And there are a lot of students who took out loans and I partially blame the public schools for being so wholesomely inept. Not all of them, but many in terms of, in my case, I mean, they told my whole middle school, high school, they told them all, if you want to be successful, you have to go to college. Even if you have no idea what you want to be when you grow up, go to college. Ironically, I've met more millionaires and more successful people, entrepreneurs and business owners who have high school degrees than actual college degrees. I know a lot of colleagues or former people I went to college with who got BS degrees. Now, I don't mean a bachelor's in science. Well, in some cases, yes. I mean, bullshit degrees, part of the French. Larry had actually the, no correlation to the real world with one of my one of my old high school buddies got an MBA. What was it? No, no, not an MBA. You could argue that'd be worth it for the business connections. He got a master's in English and history, and they ended up bartending. So he's got six figures of, because again, he got the college degree, then went to the master, six figures of student loan debt to be a bartender. No private business or bank would ever give you a loan for those types of be, with terrible degrees. I mean, there's so many people with underwater basket weaving degrees, it's ridiculous. A bank would laugh you out of the room if you said that. Now, if you want to be a doctor or a lawyer or some type of instance where it would be beneficial to have traditional training, then yeah, they would fund those all oh, eight days a week. But right now, college loans are federally insured, aka you can't ever get rid of them and they're guaranteed by the government. Another reason why colleges are so prohibitively expensive for some people and you just go up in price while I would argue the value seems the same, if not maybe a little bit low, the price is going up and up and up because there's no incentive for them to lower prices. They know you're going to pay whatever they want and the loans are guaranteed. The colleges get paid basically day one. So you're actually, in many instances, you're not paying the college back directly, you're paying back the people who took out the loan from, the third parties. Now, again, I think this will, this could sway, I'm not sure how many voters, again, those two million people are probably pretty happy if this does go through. And there are a lot of people struggling right now. A lot of people have, you know, student loans, I'm still paying them off. Ironically, I learned more in the first year of starting business than I did in all four years of business school, but I'm not advocating my responsibility, I'm paying it back slowly but surely. And I always tell people, if you have loans, you should continue to live on a college budget. There's a reason my phone is, what, the Samsung Galaxy X10, which most people would consider antique. Might be a business justification to re get a new one this year, but it still works. My watch is, what is it, seven or eight years old by now? So it's one of those things where I always tell people, if you still got loans, you should probably live a humble life and just work like hell to pay them off. Now, partially digress, in terms of political strategy, while I don't agree with this, obviously I don't think it's moral for someone else to pay someone else's loan off, especially if you never took out a loan to begin with. Imagine if you're a plumber working hard and now you have to pay for someone's underwater basket weaving degree because they chose a degree that had no correlation to the real world, actually making a living. Doesn't seem fair with anyone with a modicum of intelligence. Now, that being said, I think it's actually a good political move because many people will agree with this. Many people want free money. It's one of the bad things about politics on the left and the right. You have a lot of de what do you call it? De facto bribery. They're not just giving you know, not just putting cash in your pocket, but you have all these quote unquote relief programs that will get votes. Now the real question is, will this gain more votes from the people who are getting the vote the loans for quote unquote forgiven, aka paid off by someone else, or could it alienate a a voter base where they don't agree with this policy, they don't like that they're being taxed at a greater rate or their tax dollars being given to someone else for the decisions that they chose to make. I suspect, I mean, people on the left and people on the right, I mean, there are certain vote bases that are kind of just baked in. They'll vote for whatever person's on the ballot, regardless, just because it has an R or a D by their name. 
it's really wonder how many people in the middle can you persuade that you have the best methodologies to fix problems and you think you have the best methodologies to put the country in a best direction to get most beneficial. And that being said, I think, I mean, in the past couple of years, people have seen how much, in many instances, not all, that college has basically become a legal scam. And fascinatingly enough, I mean, oh, it's just astonishing how many people have their lives detrimentally impacted negatively because they took out these loans that they didn't comprehend, but they still signed on the down line. And everyone told them, yeah, this is a great idea, Billy. You should get an English degree. Even though you don't want to teach English, you don't know what you want to do. You should, you should, you should probably spend hundred grand on that. What? Ridiculous. But again, let me know. Do you think, I mean, I, I think this will be an overall net negative for Biden. There will be some people who will see this message and vote for him because they see it, because they want this to relieve debt or more, more accurately put, they want someone else to pay for off their loans. But I think overall, I think more people will disagree with this statement. So it might backfire, but maybe I'm alone in my assessment. Maybe every single comment will be applauding the president for this proposal. And they are just really desperate to get that free money. Stab in the comments and find out. One well, of the first ones comes from Paul Zuzupa saying, quote, Canceling student loan debt is constitutional. Nancy Pelosi said so, as did the Supreme Court. Biden is just trying to buy votes, unquote, getting 2.3 thousand likes. And that is actually a retweet from an article from 2023 in June, where the Supreme Court struck down the student loan forgiveness program, which, again, framing and vernacular is important. There's a reason why many politicians and many people analyze what they say for days before they actually say it. Again, that sounds fancy, student loan forgiveness. Oh, it's so compassionate. I mean, probably won't be as attractive of an idea if someone said, you're going to pay off someone else's loans because they messed up. You're financially responsible with your life's decisions and you, you chose the right path, but you're going to bail out Sally because she, she, she decided to go for a degree in lesbian dance. That is no correlation to the real world or making a living. Now, scrolling down, you have Rachel. She says, quote, hit the like button if you... if." If Joe Biden is the worst president in your lifetime, I'm going to get 2.3 thousand likes. That being said, depending on your age, it's a small sample size, relatively speaking. Traditionally, it's usually present every four, you know, every eight years, with one of the few outliers being the 2020 election. But still, Joe Mariano says, "quote The Supreme Court will overturn this BS. Just all fake election tactics." Getting 1.4 thousand likes. DC Drano says, "quote So I had to pay back my student loans by myself." And now my tax dollars are used to repay other people's loans. Seems fair, unquote. Gave 9.3 thousand likes, which, again, I think that is a very popular sentiment. A lot of people, I believe, are going to agree with that statement. Because, again, it's quite literally the definition of not fair. Max, or sorry, Matt simply said, relieving meaning what? Taxpayers pay it for it instead of the people who took out the, lo the loan and benefited from it? And it's like a truck stop sign where they change the sign to say, there's no such thing as government funded. It's all taxpayer funded. I'm quoting 996 likes. Harrison Crank says, quote, find the university endowments to pay for this. Millions of 18 year olds were scammed by America's university systems, getting 320 likes. Fascinating heart. I believe Harvard has a 40, is it 42? It's a, in the $40 billion endowment, I believe. Actually, let's pull it up really quick. Let's just say they're not hurting for money anytime soon. But they're one of the most well-known for having an, endow an endowment system or having a high endowment size. Jeez Louise, they are good at investing. Wow. Harvard current, and again, this is from an endowment as of fiscal 2023. Harvard has a $49.495 billion endowment. And it is also the largest of all the universities, according to Wikipedia, which is Quite a pretty penny, to say the least. Well, a pretty vintage penny, since modern pennies are 99.99% zinc and just really thinly copper-plated. Scrolling down, you have Savannah saying, quote, why are, you, why are you putting this burden onto the rest of the American taxpayers? The government doesn't have any money. You're attempting to steal taxpayer dollars to do this. SCOTUS has already ruled against you. You are not above the law. Getting 665 likes, though. Kind of is above the law when you consider the document storage charges were dropped against them when the Department of Justice said, well, we don't think you're fit to stand trial, so we're not going to charge you for this. And yet Trump is being taken to the courts for that same exact charge of improperly storing classified documents. So I think you could actually argue, yeah, 
in, my, in some cases, specifically that uh, case above the law. Joe Biden press release parity account says, quote, we will also cancel your mortgage and credit card debt if you believe it's unfair. I'm going 719 likes, which, again, there are some people who think landlords are evil and blaming them for all their problems. When, yeah, that, it, it, that was supposed to be a joke tweet, but it's not out of the realm of possibilities in terms of, again, the government forced landlords to basically not charge for their services during the pandemic when the government forced everything to shut down. Gunther Eagleman says, quote, what's next? Reparations, unquote. Well, yeah, as well as a middle finger emoji. I got 1,000 likes, which... Again, that would buy a lot of votes, uh, specific demographics. And those are very popular with certain segments of the United States. Now, overall, if you poll people on average, w well more than 50% do not agree with the historic reparations because it's very similar to the situation. You have someone else paying for someone else's deeds. Now, you also have Ranger Monk saying, quote, are you also going to forgive mortgage loans? Game 162 likes. Someone by the name of, you know the thing, says, quote, you have already done enough. And it's an infographic of Biden and it says, since Biden took office, overall prices have increased by 18.6%. Food prices are up 21.2%. Rent is up 20%. Electricity is up 28.4%. Hashtag Biden economics and says Jim to, what is this? Jim Low EPA Shutterstock, I guess for the photo credit. Annoyingly enough, they didn't give you a link to actual statistics that break down all those numbers or how they calculate those numbers, annoyingly enough, but that did get 109 likes. The best way says, quote, you cannot bribe your way back into another term. This is not legal and it's grossly unfair. How many times do the courts have to slap you down on, quote, game 110 likes? He says that, but it's not out of the realm of possibility that you can bribe your way into another term. I mean, again, it, it helped get some votes in the past. Scrolling down more and more. Patriot Mag, I guess, guy says, quote, Given the courts said no, this action officially makes you a dictator, quoting 495 likes. Let's see here. There's got to be some contrarian thoughts or contrarian statements here. Kevin Dalton simply said you're buying votes at taxpayer dollars, getting 241 likes. Let's see. Ramp Capital says, quote, my mortgage identifies as a student loan. I'm getting 115 likes. Let's see. For, for America, says, quote, your administration is proposing something that is unconstitutional, getting 416 likes, which, again, also shows you the fascinating confirmation bias by the mainstream media. If Trump ever suggested anything that was unconstitutional, it'd be on the news outlets 24-7, and they'd all be viscerally critiquing him. And yet, in this case, most of the mainstream media aren't even touching this. And if they are touching this topic, they're framing it in a positive way, saying how it's forgiveness and helping people. So overall, at least on X Twitter, as youth might say, got ratioed by the comment section. I mean, I scrolled down for quite a bit, couldn't find a single positive comment. And that being said, there are people who do want this program. They want the free money. They, and again, I do think they have been somewhat screwed by the public school systems because in many cases, the public schools brainwash kids to think that's the only way you can be successful in life is go to yet another public university, go to another college, spend even more money. So I understand that. And Again, it sucks. There are some people who took out some BS degrees, pun moderately intended, that had no correlation to the real world, had no correlation to getting a real job. And at the end of the day, it's fascinating. It's tax season, too. I mean, most of these schools aren't teaching you anything about taxes, mortgages, how to properly use a credit card. I mean, there's just so, in many, not all cases, but there's so much value they aren't providing. that like, It could be. It'll be interesting to see if they ever actually change their value prompt to add more value or decrease the cost. But again, because of the aforementioned, you know, things that I said a couple minutes ago, and the loans are guaranteed. It's the one type of debt you can't erase. You can erase credit card debt, you can erase medical debt, but through bankruptcy process, you can never get rid of student loan debt. It's federally guaranteed. I mean, so for that reason, I don't think the cost will go down anytime soon. Even if we do have a decrease in popularity where less people start to go to the institutions. They also have an issue where there's not much diversity on these campuses. I mean, 90, it's in the 90th percentile, like 99.7% of the teachers were all wildly left wing. Now, thankfully, I went to the college in the Midwest. There's a little more diversity of opinion. But even there at University, University of Iowa, most teachers are pretty, as youth might say, leftist. And personally, I think if you want a good rounded education system, you should have multiple perspectives and multiple ideas, ideals to discuss and, you know, talk about what solutions might be best. But let me know in the comments. Do you think this will be 
another lightning rod for the election. Do you think you could gain some more steam? Again, you got over a million views. There are a lot of people who would agree with it, and there are a lot of people who would benefit from this. Also, a lot of people would be hurt by this because their tax dollars are going to be increased or going to be going somewhere else. I mean, the U.S. debt is, what, $34 trillion? Let's pull that up really quick for a depressing last note. Let's see here. U.S. debt clock. Another fascinating thing to think back to, even when Obama first got elected, he said, you know, having a debt is, you know, it's unpatriotic, it's bad. And all left and right, the president's just racked up that fees and all those all that debt. So now that the debt is at thirty-four trillion six hundred thirty-nine billion, and just it, I, I, it just goes up literally every second. And the debt per citizen also going up. Obviously, debt per taxpayer goes in, going up, and the federal budget deficit going up. I, and I mean, they just keep taking more and more money. The revenue, the U.S. government revenue, is also going up. But again, it's not closing that delta. It's a net negative. And. It won't be long before all the money we're paying down is just paying down the interest on the loans that we have as a government or as a country. It's not even paying down the principal, which things they should have taught in college that they don't for a lot of people. It is not good for the country long term. And I mean, maybe at the end of the day, we just have to sell off something we don't use, like Hawaii or something. I don't know. But something's going to give at the end of the day because the bills are going to come due. And it's going to be quite concerning when that time comes. But let me know do you think this is going to be a hot political issue for the upcoming election? Could it resonate with a majority of Americans so that it would actually propel Biden up in the polls? Again, there are some people who agree with it, but as always, be fascinated to hear what you have to say. Other interesting political news, you have JP Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon critiquing Biden's attack on natural gas, which again is saying something. This is one of the most powerful, influential CEOs on the planet. He's been successfully leading JP Morgan Chase for decades. Every financial institution basically looks at him in admiration. And because, again, from a business perspective, they have been incredibly successful with their whole whole institution. While banks are going bankrupt, which, again, that sounds grammatically awkward. Banks are going bankrupt. But nevertheless, they've stood pretty strong. And, in fact, they've actually bought out mainly competition that have gone down, like Silicon Valley Bank, as well as the other one that wasn't as popular that I can't remember off the top of my head. Now, this comes to us thanks to the DailyCaller.com. And they say, quote, Enormously naive, J.P. Morgan CEO slams Biden's natural gas pause, issuing warning about the economy. Now, Jimon emphasized the usefulness of liquid natural gas as a form of affordable energy for the U.S. and its allies, while the pro project pause increases the dependency on oil and coal and harmful, harming economic and geopolitical advantages, according to the statement. Which, again, yes, one of the key things you need for a country to foster, you need cheap energy. Because again, when you look at the how most countries, how most civilizations, civilizations evolve, traditionally they start off with manufacturing, then they keep going from there. A lot of them get into the service industry and technology. That's been the progression we've seen across the globe for several years. Now, Diamond also said, "quote Trade is real politic, and the real cancellation of future liquid natural gas projects is a good example of this fact." The projects were delayed mainly for political reasons to pacify those who believe that gas is bad and that oil and gas projects should simply be stopped. This is not only wrong, but also environmentally naive. One of the only ways to reduce CO2 for the, new, for the next few decades is to use gas to replace coal. When oil and gas prices skyrocketed last winter, nations all around the world, wealthy and very climate conscientious nations like France, Germany, and the Netherlands, as well as lower income nations like Indonesia, Philippines, and Vietnam that cannot afford the higher costs, started to turn back to their coal plants, unquote. Which is hilariously ironic for the European Union, where you have to be so dependent on Russia, oil, and gas. And then Trump told them, hey, you probably shouldn't do this. I mean, historically speaking, maybe you should uh, be more self sufficient. And their own country is actually shutting down all their own energy cap producing capabilities. Yeah, and then that happened, and now they're starting to turn to coal. And China's building multiple coal plants as we speak. Diamond also said, It's important to note that the economy is based on being fueled by large amounts of government deficit spending and past stimulus. There's also a growing need for increased spending as we continue transitioning to a green economy, restructuring global supply chains, boosting military expenditures, and battling high rising healthcare costs. This may be lead to sticker inflation and higher rates in the marketplace. And in terms of the prices, and this is again from dailycaller.com, they note that prices have risen 18.5% since Biden took office in January 2021, most recently rising 3.2% year-to-date by higher than the, than the Fed's targeted 2% in response to federal fund 
rate have been placed in range of 5.2% to 5.25%, the highest in level in 23 years. Just going down more and more statistics. Let's see here. You also note how you've had an increase in natural gas prices. And again, this is one of the reasons you've seen so much consolidation in the oil industries. I mean, last year you had Denbury Resources headquartered out of Plano, Texas. They were acquired, as well as another famous one, Pioneer Natural Resources, that was based out of Irving, Texas. They're both acquired by Chevron and Exxon Mobil. And it's one of those things where if you're not allowed to have new sites, well, you have to acquire companies that have those. And putting a pause on all these and having some of these institutions are actually, they actually won't lend you money for certain projects if you're, say, an oil exploration company. And just doing one geo survey and doing one, just starting a new oil well is, is a huge upfront investment. And there's a little bit of gambling to it. Granted, you could argue it's an educated gamble because you can do a lot of surveying and now geothermal, geo, uh, what is it, Geo geographical, geology? Yeah, I got there eventually. You do a lot of analysis in that regard, but it's still a huge upfront gambling investment and if the banks won't lend you money, or many of them won't lend you money, and the industry is being more and more regulated, and you're being pressured to decrease how much you produce, how many of those new wells are going to actually be, how many of them are going to be drilled? How many of them are really going to be started? So there, there are many reasons why this is detrimental. And again, solar doesn't work everywhere. I always like to tell people, I mean, there's certain use cases where, yes, things make sense. There's a use case for darn near everything. But I think this will be a big political point for 2024, the election. Because something that everyone can very easily relate to is how much do you pay at the pump? Which granted, there's a huge ripple effect when you kneecap the fossil fuel industry. And one of the biggest is grocery prices. Well, how do our groceries get to the stores? Overwhelmingly, they get there from trucks, trains, things that require fossil fuels. And that's one of the variables that increases the cost of goods sold at the grocery stores. Transportation costs increase. And again, something that's very easily relatable, how much does it cost you to fill up your tank? Is it, remember when it was $1.35 a gallon? Remember when it was under $2 per gallon for natural un, or regular unleaded gas? And now it's three, four, five dollars. In California, it's over $5 per gallon. That's also because California has higher stringent standards, so they have a dual monopoly or a duopoly, where there's only, I believe there's two or three refineries in California that can refine the gas to their specifications. In addition to having one of the highest taxes. Fun business fact, one of the highest states, or the highest state with actual gas tax is Pennsylvania, but because of the high processing cost in California, the highest cost per gallon overall is in California. And I don't suspect that'll change anytime soon, but that's something that's very easy to relate to in terms of you see that at the pump and you're just disgusted. You just think, remember when gas was cheap? Remember when the oil was, a, remember when the, the US was the first, they were energy dependent, dependent, independent for the first time in like 50 plus years? That was in, what was that, 2019? We, had, we, we actually were producing so much, we are actually exporting how times have certainly changed. So I think, again, I think Jamie Dimon chiming in is helping because again, he's he's more left-leaning and many people see him, again, Chase is no by no means perfect. I mean, they do discriminate based on what it, certain industries that you work in. I mean, there's certain friends I know where they have certain firearm related industry or businesses like an ammo sale company, where after a certain threshold, you're just told by JP Morgan, we no longer wish to do business with you. So by no means are they perfect, and by no means are they, you know, absolute 100% we love freedom kind of company. But I do think Jamie is bringing a part of a good point. We need cheap fuel, and you can't just turn a switch to transition the U.S. to green energy overnight. Well, I would also argue when many of the green tech isn't really green. Well, it's green dollars for those companies, but it's not fiscally green yet. That's why windmills are crap with a 25-year ROI to break even, or actually 25 years of usage just to break even. Then you have to dispose of the blades, which are not good for the environment because of the materials they're made out of. Again, a wise man once said there are no such thing as solutions, only trade-offs, which, again, in terms of other alternative energies, I think nu nuclear, of all the things, all the tech we have right now, I think nuclear is still the cleanest, most efficient form of energy. Now, that being said, there's so much red tape, it's very hard to actually build a new plant. And you could actually argue it's 100% recyclable and renewable because you can actually use the depleted uranium as tank busters for the, for the military industry, since it is one of the most dense materials out there. But I partially digress. I do think this will be a big political issue because it's something that every, every American can relate to in terms of the price of fuel, price of natural gas for your home, and a lot of the oil byproducts that go into darn near everything we consume. So let me know. Do you think, I mean, they talk about all the time politics is, you know, the price per gallon at the pump. 
Do you think this will be a big political issue going into the election year? Or do you think no one will care? People just kind of become conditioned to pay three to five dollars per gallon and they just kind of absorbed it into their budget. They no longer think about it. I mean, let me know. As always, it'd be fascinating to hear what you have to say. Now, going over to the business blunder of the day, you have hand sanitizer being recalled because it can cause blindness or coma, which is quite morbidly ironic to say the least. This is first reported thanks to Daniela over at Fox News and Fox News Business, and they said, quote, hand sanitizer, allo gel, recalled over warnings it could cause comas or blindness. They know that the products were sold between May 2021 and October 2023. And they note that, quote, several lots of hand sanitizer and a low gel are being recalled for containing methanol, which can put consumers at risk for serious health issues, according to federal officials. The recall affects 40 lots of Aruba Aloe Hand Sanitizer Gel Alcohol 80% and Aruba Aloe Alcohol Gel, which contains alcohol denatured with met methanol, Unquote, according to a notice posted by the FDA, the FDA, or sorry, the FDA warned that recalls, the recent recall that quote substantial methanol exposure can cause nausea, vomiting, headache, blurred vision, coma, seizureness, permanent blindness, as well as permanent damage to the central nervous system or death. Uh, consumers, of course, are being told to stop the products and immediately discard them. They note that the Aruba Aloe Balm Envy's affected hand sanitizer gel is packaged in the 12 fluid ounce dark green plastic bottles and has white labels reading in part low Aruba aloe hand sanitizer gel 80% alcohol made in Aruba's world's finest aloe. Scrolling down here. They also know that the Aruba aloe alcohol gel, which is used for temporary pain relief and itching associated with minor burns, sunburns, insect bites, or minor skin irritants, is packaged in two sizes, 2.2 fluid ounce plastic bottles and 8.5 fluid plastic bottles. The bottles are transparent with the labels that read in part, Alcoholoda gel, pain relieving gel, 0.5 lidocaine hydrochloride. Now, of course, De even more detrimentally sad enough, it's one of those things where the younger you are, the more negatively detrimental this could be to your health. So especially concerning if you have children in the house or if they may have used the product. They know that the affected products were distributed between May 2021 and October 2023 and sold in the United States online through Aruba Aloe Balm Envy's website. Uh, now, I don't know if this is insult to injury, but what do you think about this resolution? The company notified customers who are impacted by the recall and offered a discount coupon for the next purchase. I mean, I don't know how many people are going to actually take you up on that coupon when you so, you just alienated all their trust in you. Especially if you have kids and you're even more sensitive to the product safeties. I mean, I don't know if anyone would ever trust this company again. I mean, they're giving you a coupon, but it's for something you might not even need. And granted, it's been quite some time since the actual purchase. So I understand why, fiscally speaking, maybe they go bankrupt if they were to actually give refunds to everyone. And Lord knows, no one has, really has a receipt from that far back. So it might be hard to prove the original ownership. And granted, based on the cost of goods sold, most people are just going to throw this away and never think about it again. Well, hopefully they hear about this and they don't use the product, so they just throw it away appropriately. But yeah, in terms of Mr. Or the Aruba Alo brand, and this is a pretty big indicator, in my opinion, to never trust them again. It astonishes me how many of these medical products, and I mean, we recently had an issue where eye drops could cause blindness, which is again, morbidly ironic. It's just, it's astonishing how few of these companies are really putting through, putting the products through extensive quality assurance and quality testing when it could have such a detrimental negative effect on someone's life, especially on their health. And again, they're just offering a coupon for a, for a, a discount coupon. So it's not even a, another free product. You just get a discount coupon. I mean, the take rate has got to be less than 1%. No one's going to... I can't imagine someone seeing that coupon and going, oh, yeah, I'll buy that. I mean, how many people do you think are going to see that coupon and, and actually follow through with a purchase? 1%, 2 3 oh. I was going to say that. Some fancy pop-up music. But... At the end of the day, having hand sanitizers that can actually cause blindness or coma, I gotta say that, Ruba, that is certainly the business blunder of the day.
Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in. Again, we're trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of the month. So if you could click that button, I'd greatly appreciate it. Also leaving a thumbs up, thumbs down, or comment is a great way to give me some additional feedback, letting me know how I can make the show better and better. Lastly, don't forget to take the time to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone. Just stay safe, fight the good fight.